Hi, Beth Weiland Benko here. This is part two of my Grandpa Ulrich's ancestry. In the last video, we looked at his father's family and their origins, so the top part of this chart. I will link to that video in the description below. Today, we will explore his mother's side of the family. As we saw in Arthur Ulrich's death certificate, his mother was Elizabeth Vonderhorst. Joseph and Elizabeth's marriage record tells us that she came from Minster, Ohio, which is in Auglaize County. And of course, Joseph and Elizabeth are buried together in St. Mary's Cemetery. On the tombstone, Elizabeth's birth year is 1865. We will see a variety of birth dates for her in other records. Now, not a lot is known about her, her younger years, except that her mother died when she was rather young and her father remarried rather quickly uh, after the mother's death. She's a little bit hard to track because her father, John Bernard Vanderhorst, had several brothers who all lived in and around Minster, Ohio. All of them, bless their hearts, had a daughter named Elizabeth. So there are three or four Mary Elizabeth Vanderhorst, all born in the 1860s. And it's a little hard to sort them out, but that'll be, a, that'll be a topic for a different presentation. So let's look at what happened to Mary Elizabeth Vonderhorst after her husband passed away. In 1920, uh, she was still living on West 13th Street. Uh, she had moved to number 515 though, so apparently changed apartments. And here we see when the census taker came around in January of 1920, only the two, only two of her daughters were still at home. So Josephine and Marie, so our Aunt Marie. Uh, Elizabeth was widowed. Uh, this time she said she was 54. So again, you know, that would give her a birth date about 1865, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, she said she was born in Ohio and her parents were born in, in Holland. Uh, Josephine is at home and so is Marie. We'll note that Elizabeth was working as a laundress for a private family. Uh, so she still needed to support herself and her children. And um, the other two girls are working in a laundry and in a furniture factory. In, by 1930, now uh, all of the girls have moved out. All of the children are married. The youngest, Marie, our Aunt Marie has married Tom Wood. So we have Aunt Marie and Uncle Tom living at 1756 Cortland in Cincinnati, actually in Norwood City, so a, a suburb of, of Cincinnati. Elizabeth, called Marie E. in this census, is the mother-in-law of Uncle Tom, so Aunt Marie's mother is living with them. Uh, she's 67 now and widowed, so this supports the 1863 birth date and not the, not the 65. Uh, so she was born in Ohio, her father in Holland, her mother in Germany. Uh, but we have Aunt Marie, Uncle Tom, we have Marie Jean and Thomas Arthur. So these are my mother's cousins in the 1930 census. So moving on to 1940, the family is still at 1756 Cortland. They're right down here. We'll blow that up. And we see uh, 
Thomas Wood, the head of household. Uh, interesting thing in the 1940 census is that it gives us um, how much education people had had. So he had had two years of college. Aunt Marie doesn't have anything here, so they didn't supply that information. Cousin Jeannie at that point had completed one year of high school and Cousin Tom had completed the eighth grade. Elizabeth Ulrich, mother-in-law of the head of household, had completed fifth grade. She is a 76-year-old widow. So again, we're still seeing, you know, her, her age does seem to fluctuate a bit. Okay, here are some pictures of Elizabeth von der Horst Ulrich. Uh, these are from Uncle Art's collection. And he was kind enough to let me take digital copies of these pictures. I have no idea when or where they were taken. This one is likely in, I'm guessing, Aunt Marie's backyard. Uh, looks like a, uh, a residential neighborhood. And in her older years, Elizabeth was living with Aunt Marie. So it's probably her yard, but I can't say for sure. Here is Elizabeth's death certificate. We see she was living at 1756 Cortland. Um, she was widow of Joseph Ulrich. She was born August 21st, and this does appear to be 1863. I'm pretty sure that's a three. This little swipe here is the tail of the J, and that really does look like a three to me. So I think it was 1863. Her age is given at, at 77. She was a housewife. Uh, she was born in Minster, Ohio. Her father was John Vanderhorst of Minster and her mother was Teresa Rua. And this information was given by Marie Wood. So Aunt Marie supplied the vital uh, personal statistics for um, for Elizabeth Ulrich. She passed away on July 28, 1940 of chronic colitis that she'd had since 1928. Uh, contributory factors were senility and arteriosclerosis. So watch your cholesterol. Here is a copy of the funeral card for Elizabeth Vanderhorst Ulrich. I actually have this card in in my files. Uh, I obtained it from my mother, Betty Louise Ulrich Wyland, and she likely saved it from the actual funeral. Uh, her grandmother passed away when she was 16 years old, and she very likely attended the funeral and received a card there and, and then kept it all these years. So, if we look at Elizabeth's parents, uh, her father was John Bernard Vanderhorst and her mother, Teresa Rua. So, a summary of John Bernard Vanderhorst. He was born in Holland in 1829. He immigrated about 1853 and was and married three years later to Teresa Rua in Minster, Ohio. I don't know if he was naturalized or not. Uh, he died in December of 1904 in Minster, and he's buried in St. Augustine Cemetery in Minster. I located an immigration record that I think belongs to uh, John Vanderhorst and his family. This is the passenger list of the Ashburton, which sailed from Liverpool and arrived in New York City on the 7th of May, 1853. It's a little bit hard to read, um, but this, I believe, is his father, who was Benedict Bernard. So this either says Benedict or Bernard, not sure which. His oldest brother is Heinrich, age 26. This, I believe, says Johannes Vanderhorst, who's age 24. Peter. This, this I believe, is his sister. It says female here. Um, 
and her name was Klesina, although I can't really make that out from what this says. Uh, he has a brother, Jacob, and I think this is yet another brother, possibly Martin. You do notice that over here it says died. So I believe he died um, en route to the new country. So this does seem to be a pretty close match with records that I have found in Minster uh, that, that names these people with these first names, with the last name Vanderhorst, and these approximate ages in 1853. So I'm pretty sure that this is uh, the family immigrating. We do not see John's mother in this list. It is possible that she was not able to travel with her husband. She may have remained behind with a younger child or a sick child and made the crossing at another time. Frequently, a father and children who were old enough to work would come to America first and then send for the mother and younger children once they had established a home with a farm or a business to support the family. Uh, as I said, John married uh, Teresa Rua on 17th of April, 1856. I have not found the record, uh, either civil record or a church record that documents this marriage. I know that the, um, the church records from the Archdiocese of Cincinnati are being digitized and are due to be placed online sometime in 2018. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to locate a church record that does document this marriage. I got this date from, a, uh, from another researcher. All right, in 1860, we find John Vanderhorst and his and his young family. So they're at the very top here. And I will blow that up. So there's John Vanderhorst, an apparent wife, Teresa. We don't get relationships on the 1860 census. And a young Barney, a young boy named Barney. John is a cooper or barrel maker. He has $400 worth of real estate and $100 in, in personal assets. Uh, he was born in Holland. Teresa hails from Prussia and speaks German. It says here that Barney is from Oldenburg. Um, that's a little bit puzzling because if John and Teresa were married in 1857 in Ohio, Barney should have been born in Ohio. I can't imagine that the family went back to Germany to have a baby and then showed up for the census. So I really think that, that this, is, this is an error. Uh, a lot of the census takers just put O for Ohio. Uh, it's possible that uh, in transcribing the, uh, the census that somehow, um, you know, someone making a copy of this thought that this child should have come from Oldenburg in Germany rather than from Ohio since his mother was uh, from Germany. Don't know. Okay, in 1870, uh, John Vanderhorst is living in a household. That's his brother Peter down there. Uh, John Vanderhorst is up here. Uh, he's a Cooper. He's uh, from Holland. Uh, living in Minster, Ohio. The confusing thing here is that it says he's 25. Our John Vanderhorst should have been about 41 in 1870. So this is puzzling. It may be a mistake. His wife, Mary, is 32. It's entirely possible that Teresa's real name was Mary Teresa and that she showed up as Teresa in the 1860 and Mary in the 1870 census. Uh, we see here that Marie Vonderhorst, age 75, is in the household and she is the one who's keeping house. Now, Teresa died um, in June of 18, 
1870. The census was taken on the 1st of June, 1870, and she passed away on June the 10th, 1870. So it's possible that she was ill and her mother-in-law uh, moved into the household to take care of her. There should have been two or three or more young children in the household at that time, but they're not listed here. Um, it's a possibility that they were sent to live with other relatives uh, because their mother was ill. Uh, we just don't know. Like I said, John's age seems to be uh, misreported, but because of his name, his occupation, the fact that he came from Holland, and the fact that he's in Minster, Ohio, um, I'm pretty sure that this is the right person. Okay, the 1880 census. By 1880, uh, John had remarried. His wife was Maria Anna or Mary A, as she's listed here in the 1870 census. We see John's age of 51. That's what we would expect. Uh, and he's a cooper. Uh, we see a couple of children, uh, older children here. So there's Lizetta, age 15, and Mary, age 12. These are children from either John's first marriage or his wife's first marriage. Uh, it's a little hard to sort them out. They all have very similar names. Uh, however, these four younger children here are the, the children from John and his second wife. So there's Anna, Dina, Bernard, and Rosa. Okay, the 1890 census, of course, was destroyed um, in a fire. And what wasn't burned in the fire was destroyed by the water that was being used to put out the fire. So the 1890 census does not survive. By 1900, uh, John is living in a household by himself on Main Street in, uh, in Minster. He's listed as a head of household, uh, age 71, widowed, born February of 1829. So this is consistent with other information that we have about John. Uh, says he came from Holland, and, as did his parents. And it does not list an occupation from him. So he's probably retired, infirm, whatever, at age 71. Okay, John passed away um, in 1904, at the end of 1904, actually December 30th. Um, I have not yet translated his obituary from the Minster Post, um, but it gives the, um, I guess it appeared on December 30th. He actually passed away on the 29th of December. This is an exercise I have yet to do. John's heirs came to Auglaize County Court in Wapakoneta on the 30th of January, 1905, so a month after the, uh, John passed away, and they entered his will into the record. Uh, the county clerk made note of all, of all of the living heirs. So we have Bernard, a son. We have Mary Clute, a daughter might remember that name. Mrs. Clute was unable to attend Joseph Ulrich's funeral because of high water. Okay, there's Dina Stone. We saw Dina in the 1880 cens census. There's Elizabeth Ulbrich. This is our Elizabeth living in Cincinnati. Uh, there's Anna Menke, another daughter in Cincinnati. Catherine Wilderhouse living in Maria Stein, Ohio, Lizette Seeger. Remember Mr. Seeger and Mrs. Clute were the ones who were going to go to the to Joseph's funeral and couldn't make it. So there's the Seeger. And there's also Clara Vonderhorst, who's listed here as a daughter. Now, a page or two later in the court book, 
where John's entire will is transcribed, we see that he bequeaths to my daughter's child, Clara Vanderhorst, $100 to be paid to her as soon as she is, arrives of age when she needs it without interest. Okay, so this phrase, my daughter's child, Clara Vanderhorst, indicates that she's really John's granddaughter and not his daughter. She is very likely the daughter of one of his daughters, probably illegitimate. So that begs for more, more research to try to figure out who, who Clara's parents really are. So that's a, a task for another day. St. Augustine Cemetery in Minster, Ohio. Uh, John Bernard Vanderhorst is buried buried there in Range A, Section 1, Plot 11, along with both of his wives, Teresa Rua Vanderhorst and Maria Anna Gossman Asprehi Vanderhorst. So Mar Maria Anna was the widow of Henry Sprehi or Asprehi, I've seen both, um, when she married John. So she brought at least two daughters into the marriage, uh, one of them was Lizette, uh, whose real name was Elizabeth, and she sometimes appears with the Vanderhorst last name, so causing a lot of confusion. Uh, that's why it's so hard to sort out those Elizabeths. Okay, if we take a look at uh, Elizabeth Vanderhorst's mother, that is Teresa Rua, and we believe her parents to be Bernard Heinrich Rua and Anna Maria Kokaman. So um, a search at Ancestry brings up an 1850 agricultural schedule for Bernard Rua. So in addition to population schedules, the U.S. government did agricultural censuses to determine uh, how how much of which crops were being grown and how, how much livestock uh, was being raised by farmers. So quick search in 1850 brings up this page for McLean Township in Shelby County. Now this is the very northern part of Shelby County and it's actually very, very close to Jackson Township where Minster is in Glaze County, so uh, really very close to Minster. We see here at the line with Henry Rua. He has 20 acres improved land and 30 acres unimproved. The cash value of his farm is about $300, uh, not quite as much as, as his close neighbors of $25 in farm implements. He has two horses and three milk cows. Uh, not sure how much other cattle he has. Five swine. Uh, the value of his livestock is $50. Um, and then over here we have how many, how many bushels of Indian corn and oats he's produced that year. One thing to note here is that um, Note who his neighbors are, uh, because searching the 1850 census for Henry Rua did not lead, did not yield any results. So I had I searched through the census records until I found these neighbors, and there was Henry and his family, um, with the name spelled incorrectly. So we'll look at that in a little bit. But um, we'll continue with the agricultural schedule. We'll see that on the next page, Henry's farm is also producing wool and Irish potatoes, <clears throat> butter, and hay. So it gives you some, some idea of what life was like on the farm. Then when I searched through the um, population schedule, I did see, I did find a Henry down here. And you'll note that his neighbors, Wilkie and Septra, 
are the same as the ones who preceded him in the agricultural schedule. So I'm pretty sure that this is the same person we saw in the ag schedule. There's Henry, age 62, uh, who's from Germany. Uh, there's a Henry Heedman here, 25, who's likely a farmhand living in the household or possibly a nephew or a cousin or something like that, uh, but he doesn't have the same last name. Here is Teresa. So this I believe to be Elizabeth's mother, and she has a brother named Bernard. Now, I'm not quite sure what this last name is or what it was supposed to be. Uh, could be R-U-P-E, or this could be um, a double S, so it could be R-U-S-S-E. However, uh, it does seem to be the, the right people. Uh, when I looked in immigration records, I did find um, this index entry for Bernard Heinrich Rua, who arrived in the U.S. in 1848. His wife was A.M. Kokomon. He had a child, A.M. Clara, so probably Anna Maria Clara, a child, Teresa, and a child, John Bernard. So this does seem to fit with the family that we found in Shelby County in 1850. However, uh, I'm not able to look at the book that this information comes from. It's from this book. It's written in German, obviously, and the only library that I can find that has it is in Heidelberg. So um, still looking for some more good firsthand information on those folks. So this is most of what I know so far about the ancestors on this branch of the tree. There are many more details to be researched. Of course, it's useful to research forward in time to locate the descendants of our earliest known ancestors. So these people out here, if we find all of their children and all of their children's children, these descendants are our second, third, and fourth cousins. And these are the people who are going to show up as matches to our DNA tests. So coming next, I'll be looking at our Huber ancestors the ancestors of Grandma Ulrich. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave me some comments or drop me an email. Let me know what you think and be talking to you soon. Thanks. Bye.